also have two distinct um, shipping docks. So if you follow the left edge of the paint shop up, you can see four or five semi-trailers that are backed into the building right there. They're moving the material in right there, um, and we reorganized all the material handling. We focused a lot on the assembly process. We revised the whole material handling also. And then in the, um, on the right-hand side here by these water tanks, um, you can see another dock there. There's no vehicle, or there's no trucks or trailers in there right now uh, in this picture, but of course they, there are on a daily basis. And so we use this new space for a consolidated warehousing. If you've ever been in our factory in the past, you will notice that we're storing material here and there and there and there and there. Uh, and we've had this great opportunity to consolidate this, and that's primarily what this new space is using uh, is being used for. Um, when you take a look at the paint shop, um, if you would go from like my finger up and perpendicular to the building, that's the new paint shop. Um, so it's large, and we've got some statistics here that we'll share with you right after this video. It's a new day. It's a new life. And this is not sped up. This is actually real time. Materials on the planet, 
and we do it, and we do it great. Chuck actually shared with me um, very recently that we now have the best paint surface finish within General Motors, and it goes much farther than that. We just haven't had a chance to measure it and quantify it. So we're, we're very, very, very proud of that. And if you have a second, give these guys a listen. Okay, now this is, uh, you might ask, you had that carrier that has a one car's worth of panels on it. What happens when you have a problem with one of those panels? What do you do? You have to have some level of inventory. Things do happen. And this is a car next machine where we store all different panels, all different colors. And this is in real time. So you go and you need, in this case, a yellow deck lid. Say that you want a yellow deck lid. Out comes the yellow deck lid. This business goes on. control thing, but when you put the right music to it, it just makes it better. <laughs> okay, um, I'm a firm believer that, uh, that nothing happens in life without engagement of people and in the plant. Every time that I stand up here, we talk about the things that, that our, our people are doing to help the business, to help themselves, and to help our community, so a little bit about that. Um, in my opinion, we have a thousand people, they love what they're doing and we love the people that are helping us. Here's just some examples. People doing what you guys want them to do with a lot of care, and I guess you can just simply simply watch. Try to get a broad distribution. We have all kinds of people in the plant. And we find a way to get to work with them. That's one of those kids that's being prepared.
where the, we're racing these little cars, that's generating money. We actually actually do this here at the at the museum, um, and it's a citywide event to try to raise money. And we have um, over here the typical ugly Christmas sweater contest. Um, in the bottom center, we have uh, our professional managers network arranged a golf outing uh, to benefit um, Humane Society, and then here's just people. I guess doing what they do. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I'm in this picture. I'm the dinosaur. <laughs> and the, the Statue of Liberty there is actually Nora Roper's. That's the assistant plant manager. So we're having a little bit of fun. I was trying to like attack New York or something. I didn't win. Anyway, we have all kinds of things where we, we really try to make sure that everybody in the plant has a voice to make things better, to make things safer, to make things more efficient. Um, and we also spend a lot of time um, in efforts to help our community. Um, again, more examples. Upper left, this is Real Men Wear Pink. You may be aware of this. Um, I'm a, a volunteer for that, and, and we've been successful this year being the winner of the contest, raising the most money in support of breast cancer and breast cancer research. And then in the lower right, everybody has a, a story. Uh, and in this case, it's No Shave Movember. Uh, and this is in support of men's health. Um, and then we have other activities that we have going on. So we, we truly try to, to give back uh, to the employees in our community. So this, again, I have a real you guys are just playing basketball on this plan all day? No, it's kind of four seasons. So we took the time to have a little final four competition, and this was not all of our breaks and lunches or after working out. And the idea was simply to develop some co-op and let it get it in. So we had uh, we had some fun with that. It was a it was a it was a good event, and there's a lot of people that are basketball fans. Um, every time anybody shot a basket, it cost them. Uh, well, it wasn't every basket. It was every series of ten. It cost them a buck, so they had to come and pay to participate, and all that money also went to the American Cancer Society. <laughs> Next that we have here, General Motors as a company. We also give back. We give back in all of our locations, uh, specifically for Bowling Green. $75,000. We have a privilege to decide where we want the money to move to. And uh, we like to focus on STEM-related activities, um, science, technology, education, math. And these are some of the people that were recipients of some of that money. And, uh, and they very much appreciate that. We make a big difference for, uh, for some of the local, uh, local agencies that just need help. In addition to that, I put this up as a trivia question. I'm looking for people to guess. How much money do you think our employees, and this isn't the company given a bunch of money that we give the employees credit for. Do you think it's a four, five, or six figure number that, six. Six. it's a six figure number, you're right. Our employees last year, $116,000. This is money out of their pockets in donations to things like the United Way, or drawings, or gate collections, etc., etc., it's a lot of money. And this is with about a thousand people, and we were not working for almost three months last year, and so that's an incredible amount of money. In addition to that, the seventy-five. So we're we're very proud of that, and I think that uh, that it's just the right thing to do. And that's all I have from a material standpoint. A couple other points, if we could, um, back there, we could turn the lights up on the, the panels here. Um, we also have some posters. We had a few of these last, um, last fall, and these posters are kind of cool. Um, they have a superimposed picture of the Corvette, um, and then a lot of pictures of the people that work in the plant. If you would like to have one of those, you can certainly come up. They're wrapped up. I'll take one out here so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, so you got to look really, 
really close. We have a supersized version of this that covers the wall, but this is a mosaic of all the employees in the plant. And uh, it's one more way to express the appreciation for the people that are doing the work. All those people make this car, and that's a, that's a fact. So if you like one of these, you can come up and get one. And then we've got the lights turned up um, so we can take a look at these panels after we take just a few minutes of, well, let's just say we'll take five questions. All right, so uh, Paul, okay. I'm not going to get in the middle of this one. You can. <laughs> and if there's a problem, it's his fault. Just a public announcement. This is a programmable mic, and it has been set to recognize those two code words that I gave you. <laughs> and if you have to use them while you have a mic, a two-second fuse will be ignited. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kai. Excellent presentation, man. It's super cool. The question I have has to do with all the new technology you contain within your plant. Uh, how have you trained your plant maintenance team to handle all that new work? Well, we have a, the, and everybody I think could hear the question because of the microphone. Um, that's a big concern that, that we had as we were getting ready to relaunch. We had a very deliberate plan. I talked about it in one of the previous meetings where we took all the production people, we were tore the plan up, but we had this visual <coughs> Vizendo training where we virtually teach people the job, then we go have, put, have them put their hands on uh, the equipment. Very similar to that for the skilled trades. We have um, developed programs where OEMs will come in and teach about the various uh, technologies that we have. Um, so we have a, a structured training process for them. And then what we do is we have a transition timing where we still have those OEMs on site to have the equivalent of on-the-job training what happens when you do this? Find this way to quickly recover. And for us, it's been really successful. I'm very proud of the, the trades that we have, um, and I'm proud of the operators that we have. And I would say that just in the last few weeks, we have now <coughs> been able to reach our design production capacity in the time that we're supposed to. So in 10 hours, we're producing 116 cars. It's what we're supposed to do. Anything less, we overpaid for equipment that we're not realizing. So we're, we're where we need to be from an efficiency standpoint, and it doesn't happen without the trades. Because if you ignore it, you can decide when it's going to be maintained, or the equipment will, and we prefer the trades. You may have seen the picture of the guys, uh, Tom, one of our electricians doing predictive maintenance, looking at panels. I could go on and on and on about what he's found in our various operations as it relates to lugs that aren't tight, Bearings that are too hot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to avoid before we get to a problem. Thank Good you. question. Thank you. Yep. Next one? Yes. Uh, I was wondering how long uh, the new paint booth has been in. Uh, I just got a new grand sport. It was produced two, uh, three, four months ago. And I was wondering if it has that. The, if is it, uh, is it a 2019 car? 18. And then the question would be, when was it produced? If it was produced in November or December or January, then the answer would be yes. And so if you have your, if you know when it was produced, then if it was after our break, which we came back in November, every car after our break was produced in the new paint shop. And I would say one more time, it might sound like I'm gushing a little bit, but these guys, I told you guys if you would have been here before, yeah, we're going to have to run both paint shops for a while, and we're going to mix things up, and it's going to be really hard, but that's what we're going to go do. And these guys knocked it out of the park. We didn't need the crutch or a backup of the old paint shop. And we just cut it off. Okay, who's next? We've toured your plant for years, and we've always wondered why they didn't wear safety glasses. And now we've seen them pay off. Yep, safety glasses have been mandated, and I will tell you that um, at the risk of taking too much credit for it, it's one of the things with my background, because I have a lot of powertrain background, machining, casting, components, you name it, and walking into any factory without safety glasses is just awkward. And anyway, we got to that point over, it was about a year and a half ago, 
and uh, the safety glass have been mandated since January of last year. So it's been, and then it took a while for us to get there, um, but it's been uh, it's been very very noteworthy. And I will tell you that our plant has set the standard, and now safety glasses are mandated in all assembly plants. So we've we're leading the pack in that regard. <laughs> That's correct. 116 cars a day, four days a week. And in the old plant, what was the same production? Um, it would be easier to tell me the rate, uh, give, to give you a rate of assembly, uh, and it used to be roughly 17.5 cars per hour. Now it's 11.5 cars per hour, which is roughly 33% reduced. And it works out really good, and I might add, because this year we predict that we'll sell roughly our, our production schedules right now have us running straight time meaning a full schedule we're going to take two weeks off in the summer which is very normal for an assembly plant and we're going to run straight we're in the fifth year of production so we we have that risk of declining sales and this reduction has given us the ability to simply manufacture at a level pace it's a it's a godsend if you're in manufacturing you don't like turning factories on and off it's not good Thank you. Yes. Any others? We have one, Paul, that's down here. Oh, yeah, one other thing. On a note for safety, we also led the, uh, the corporation. You can't wear a ring in our plant. And again, from a powertrain standpoint, trades should never have a ring on, especially electricians. Production should never wear rings for obvious reasons also, and you guys don't want anybody in an assembly plant wearing rings. Do you know why? You're going to scratch it. I mean, you might have the giant diamond, which is really, you know, that would probably be very obvious, but simply something metal. There's a story about the guy that closes the gate on the truck every time, putting a moon-shaped thing. This is from years gone past. We don't like it because it's not safe. We don't like it because we like people to have their fingers. Thank you, Chuck. Question. I'd like to take a minute to gush a little bit to talk about the employee pride factor. Well, the so the question about the employee pride factor, I would say that, um, and, and I'm gonna not just have a reference point of, okay, Bowling Green, we're the best, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That, I think, is a little bit condescending. I'll say that I have worked in I physically moved myself or my family 11 times in my career with General Motors. I worked internationally on two different sides of the world and in the United States and operation, I, I could count them for you, it's probably like eight or nine different facilities. The feeling that I have that's grounded in these experiences is that we have one of the best workforces and the best leadership teams in the Boeing Green Assembly Plant, period. And you might get me to say that if I was standing in front of you and I was representing the Flint assembly plant or the Spring Hill assembly plant or the Romulus engine plant or another plant. But you guys know this. When you walk through the plant, you get the feeling. If you have known anybody that comes and you build an engine with one of our builders, you know the pride that they have, their names going on. So because of these factors, and I refer to them as a symbiotic relationship between customers and the factory, we're so much better together, and this is the secret weapon that we have. We have you. And I said feedback is free. Everybody can give us feedback, and we take it. We're here, not just us, the program team. How many places can you go? What product can you experience where you're gonna get access to the likes of Taj and his whole team that come hundreds and hundreds of miles, and believe me, they got stuff to work on, and I've got stuff to work on, but we take the time, and that's what makes the difference. And you see that. There, how many Corvettes do we have sitting in our parking lots every day? Well, if it's raining, not so many. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's not raining, there's a lot, and we give them all preferential treatment, and we really try hard. In the end, it's difficult work. It's not easy. You know, nobody's job is easy. I say my job isn't easy. Kim, Chuck, Nick, who's over there too, others. We have tough jobs, and uh, uh, 
but it makes it easier when you know that people love your product like they do. That was a little bit maybe more than we asked for. I stopped short of shedding a tear. That would be too dramatic. I didn't have music to go with it. Okay, one more question and then we'll start. Paul, you got one more. Thanks, Kyle, for a great presentation. We really appreciate that. And first and finally, I'd like to ask you just how difficult was it to integrate the assembly of the ZR1 with the other models being assembled? Okay, I can do that in three letters. Anybody want to guess what they are? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you so, sure with a piece of cake? <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason I say that, we, we really didn't have hiccups with the introduction of the ZR1. Good plans, well executed, gives you that level of performance. But, go out and look at the ZR1, look at it next to a Stingray, a Grand Sport, or a Z06. The whole front half of the car is redone. There's double everything. There's triple everything. Everything's bigger, it's more compact, and it makes it tougher for us. The reality is, is that we didn't miss a beat. We didn't miss a car. We've delivered everything that, uh, that, that we were supposed to, and so, so far, knock on wood, it's been a great success. And I can, can't stop right there. You read the magazines, you look at the track times that are being decimated by the ZR1. Okay, we, all we did is make a tool that will deliver the best engineered car on the planet. Yes. Yeah. story here. Last year we got a tour of the plant of the paint shop that uh, Kai was kind enough to take us through. Special snip. And, and I made a smart A remark about when you're going to learn to uh, paint silver. And Kai kept Chuck from beating me senseless <laughs> on the spot. And I just want to say uh, two of our club members just bought blade silver 219s. And the silver is absolutely stunning. You see it in the sunlight with that metallic in it. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll end the, the presentation. Um, we'll be here for a little bit. Like I said, welcome to uh, grab a poster or two. And Chuck, if you and Kim and Nick, if you would do the honors of pulling the, uh, let's just say the fascia shipping covers off of these uh, these panels, but these are designed to protect the, the panels. All right, we're going to do one thing though. We're going to take one person, and the gentleman here.